The sessions get so <laughs> three, two, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> The session begins in 2019. It's a lot different than 2018, plus criminal justice reform. Just exactly what does that mean? We'll tell you in just a moment. It's Mitchell Talks, the News 9 Sessions with Aaron Brilbeck and Joe Albaugh. Oh, boy. And now we're rolling this. Are we going to listen? We're good. Good. Uh, <clears throat> three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Aaron Brilbeck, our friend, the estimable Mr. Albaugh. The like what? That? Estimable. That'll work. Yeah. I've been called many things, but that <laughs> I saw it on TV. That one takes thing. the cake. So across the board, what everybody's talking about this year, three separate things. Healthcare, education, and criminal justice reform. And that's what brings you here today. It's good to have you here. I'm I'm for that. It's it's um, I'm starting my fourth session since I returned to Oklahoma. And for the fat past three years I've been kind of uh, standing at the bully pulpit talking about our problem in the entire uh, criminal justice spectrum and uh, it looks as if we're getting and developing some consensus on what needs to be done. Um, January 23rd you both know that we hosted a forum and uh, had all the stakeholders or their representatives uh, in one room and it was nice to have everybody in the sandbox so they could hear the same thing about the state of our system, just uh, the Department of Corrections by itself. And then the ancillary issues that come along with everything from A to Z when we start incarcerating people, whether it's at the county le level, the city level, or even at the state level. So I'm, I'm hopeful that, uh, that legislative leaders and the rank and file are, are listening and paying attention and something will happen, substantively. The thing is, we hear the term criminal justice reform makes a great bumper sticker, but it means different things to different people. Sure does, and that's why it was important for the Department of Corrections to host such a forum in, in a neutral place so, so everyone could at least hear a plan, a way to get to uh, uh, shrinking our population over the next 10 years so we can be at the national average in the uh, incarceration rate per capita. So what does that plan look like? Well, it's going to take some uh, bold moves to uh, redesign, rewrite uh, a lot of our code in the state, eliminate the duplications, uh, streamline the criminal, uh, the, uh, criminal justice code, if you will, uh, and the process. Uh, I checked this morning, we're just right at 27,000 incarcerated. We've been working on county jail backup, those who have received their JNSs um, that are held in county jails until we have bed available for them. A year ago we were at 1,800 and today we're just below 700 in county jail backup. We're making some progress, part of that is 780. There aren't as many cases being filed as there were a year and a half ago. So there's been a backup of that group and uh, the filings have gone down or slowed down, I should say. Our system is, uh, is akin to watering your garden. You know, you're standing there with a the hose and you turn the faucet on all the way, so it's just a constant stream. And what I'm trying to get everyone to think about is slowing that down. Don't turn it on full blast every time uh, you, you water that garden. So we're, we're making some progress. We still need to modernize our facilities. My biggest uh, priority this session for our employees is a pay raise. Uh, we are losing more people than I can hire. Baby boomers have earned their right to retire. Uh, I can't return that gray matter or experience. We're hiring uh, from the millennial generation now and uh, they just have a different set of values and work ethic than uh, all of us do. Right. And you and, and I have kind of talked about that a little bit too in terms of you're offering them 1374 an hour to start. That's it's, correct. And th their mindset is, you know, we don't care about uh, the retirement plan you've got, the health care plan you've got. What we care about right now is paying rent, and we can't afford to pay rent on 1374 an hour. Take home rate. 
take home pay. That's what they're talking about. I was at the Sayer on Monday of this week, and we're struggling with uh, medium population males, almost 2,300 individuals. We're struggling to get 18, 19 correctional officers to work per shift. And they're out there in the deep gas area. I mean, it's easy with the oil patch. Make a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, boy. And it's a hell of a lot more than thirteen seventy four an hour. Can I ask a couple of numbers questions, which is always dangerous for me? It may we, be dangerous for me. Well, let's see. Let's give it a whirl here. If we were, what, what do you have the number again in terms of in Department of Correction custody, the, the number? Uh, in custody, incarcerated? Yes, sir. Not those under supervision. It's just right below 27,000. So if we I'm were talking about 10 or 15 below 27,000. If we were roughly in the regional average, what would that number be? Oh boy, that probably would uh, force us to release 12,401 overnight to be at the national average. So it's a big old number. It's a big old number. We incarcerate everybody in Oklahoma. And the sad part is we don't have programs for everybody's ills in our correctional system. 20 years ago, the department, because of money, started gutting programs, uh, except for the education area, working on uh, adult basic education or, or a GED, now they so call they it HS. Right. So they could get out, stay out, have a certificate, and, and we gutted the trade uh, vocational uh, training and eliminated all the instructors and teachers. Well, it's hard to get those folks back into the system now as I'm trying to depopulate so-called temporary beds that have been there 25 years. Um, that ain't temporary. Uh, it's not temporary. That's why it's Quarter a joke to call yeah. it uh, temporary. It's a total joke. So we're, uh, we're a mess, to tell the truth, and we're not offering, let, well, let me rephrase this, less than a third of our folks, male and female, that are incarcerated have any access to any type of programming to better themselves if they wanted to so they'd interdict their own behavior once they get out of the system. Ninety-one percent of the 27,000 are going to get out of the system at some point. But right now you're just warehousing. We're warehousing. We're the Department of Warehousing. Well, what do we want when those folks get out? We all want better neighbors. They're going to live next door to you and, not come you, back, right? and me. Yeah. And we don't want them to come back. That's why it's important to give them a skill, education, something, a certificate that they can go out and earn a job. Our welders that we, I mean, with oil patch, they can earn 80, 90, 95,000. If they're good, they can earn 120,000. They're not going to go back to the street, their old behavior, making $120,000 yeah. or even $90,000. Welders walk in yeah. and get a job anywhere they want right now. Pretty much right now. So. On the numbers thing, if the, what we're hearing, it's kind of like criminal justice reform is like truth justice in the American way, I'm trying to figure out what the definition is. Mm -hmm. I hear different groups out there, and they're all of their own extremes out there. And I'll hear, well, if we roll back 780 or make it retroactive, that's 4,500. I have other no, people. No, it's not 4,500. There's all kinds of numbers floating uh, around uh, out there. Uh, well, that's that's high expectations. We're we're looking at roughly. 780 only possession, maybe a thousand people. And then I hear and there's then thousands the, and thousands of well, possession only. That, that, that's it's not that many, but there are a lot. Okay. But 780, just the statute change um, or the question, the state question change on the statute, is roughly a thousand. Now some of those are going to fall out for one reason or another. Because they're not in there just because of possession, right? There's a well, that's that adds to the group. So you can probably those that have other controlling crimes, uh, just have other issues, not behaving, number one. Uh, but that adds to, so you can get up to 4,500 or 2,500. It all depends on how you do the math and depending upon what you want to see done in criminal justice reform, you can make the numbers fit whatever your agenda is. But it ain't going to be 12,000 people. Yeah, it's not going to be 12,000 what you're saying, people. that's... We it's really impossible. Get to okay. It's impossible to put out 12,401 tomorrow. The governor is also talking about changing the structure for fees and fines. Good. Uh, because Good. right now the way that it works is 
These fees and fines are imposed by district attorneys. Good. They make half of their money from these fees and fines. And if I can't pay those fees and fines, I find myself behind bars you, you become, hanging out with you. You, you abscond. Yeah. You become an absconder. Is that going to work? Uh, yeah, that's a start. Uh, killing these fees and fines that are burying people who don't have a job when they get out. They don't have a, a place to live. We're failing at reentry, making those two basic things happen. Um, and, and I'm sorry, but it costs money to, to help people uh, write their lives. And there's been a uh, wanton desire not to fund the Department of Corrections for the past at least 20 years or so. And now we're number one in the world uh, incarceration per capita. Well, the attitude has been up till now that, hey, you broke the law, you get what you deserve. It shouldn't be pleasant. Yeah. Well, it's not pleasant, I guarantee you. Um, these folks that are in prison, they lay around in their, their racks all day long eating whatever they want to eat to a certain extent. No exercise. You can't force inmates to do anything these days. You can't even force them to get into a program uh, so they can better themselves. They have to have that, that willingness. They have to be a partner with us to do that. And uh, if they sit in their bunks 23 hour, 24 hours a day, I mean, they're thinking up all kinds of things that they can Mischief. stir the pot on because mm -hmm. they see that we're, we're horribly understaffed and they know why we're horribly understaffed. So it's pressure points on the system. No wonder people don't want to come to work for us. It's dangerous. Could we talk about that for just a second? Why don't you talk about what the life of a one of your employees is? You're only at about, what, 60% staffing? 62. You've got, you pay low wages. Yes. All right. So what's it like for these folks that are working in there? Well, let me go back to Sayre just for a minute, the North Fork facility. Um, just short of 2,300 men, medium classification, bunch of knuckleheads. So when they see we have few correctional officers, that gives them the incentive to stir the pot. Plus there's gang activity out there. And we don't have enough folks to, to, uh, to uh, cover every shift, which forces us to spend an inordinate amount of money on overtime. Right now we're on mandatory overtime at half our facilities. That means that they're working not eight hour shifts, they're working 12 hour shifts, five, six, even seven days a week. And I don't like it, it's against the law, but we are on mandatory overtime. And it all goes back to the rate of pay. We're not attracting the cream of the crop. If you're a warm body, and I don't know that you are, but we'll so hire you almost anyway. Some, uh, sort of yeah. back and forth. We'll hire you. You don't have to have a pedigree. You have to be at least 19. But if you're a warm body, we hire you. We put you through eight weeks of a training academy that will prepare you to be inside. And then you go back to the millennial situation. They think it's X before they get in there and they find out it's Y. Well, what do you mean I can't take my cell phone? <laughs> well, excuse me, we collected 8,000 cell phones this past calendar year. Hey, you gotta be on it's eBay. a problem. That's an eBay deal right there. Well, I, I got to think, too, if I'm working a 12-hour shift seven days a week, I'm not going to be as alert as I should be for walking no in doubt. a facility like no that. No doubt. But the biggest problem that we have is that you just can't shut that off when you're done with your shift. So you're taking all that baggage home with you. Unfortunately, a couple of weeks ago at the Bill Johnson facility, we had a suicide. And it wasn't the correctional officer. It was his wife. And they had a young baby, and fortunately, he he came home after his shift, and the baby was fine in the bed. But what we're running into that all the time. People get worn out. I told you I was up at uh, North Fork Monday. They look like zombies. I mean, I'm not trying to degrade those employees, but this is not only correctional officers, but the case managers, the unit managers, the office support staff, the warden, the deputy warden. They're there all the time under all this pressure, and it takes a toll on, well, now we're just below 1,600 correctional officers, but you can't, you can't just focus on them. You have to focus on the entire pool of employees. We're only at about 4,200 employees 
agency-wide. So just to recap, originally you were asking last calendar year $800 million for two new facilities. Right now you're looking for $72 million for primarily raises. Well, uh, $20 million of the $72 million, uh, actually it's $19.5 million of the $72 million goes to raises. Uh, and that's a 5 to 7% raise across the board for everybody except for medical staff. I always talk about the shortage of correctional officers, but we can't hire. There's a nor nursing shortage uh, nationwide, as mm -hmm. everybody knows, but we can't hire doctors, we can't hire PAs, the, the right type of nurses, med techs, so we have Dentists. to go to an outside third party hiring and we're paying a fortune for that. You know, they wrap that up. I spent on overtime alone last year for correctional officers. Um, a little over $16 million. I wish I didn't have to plan in my budget over time that I could use that $16 million to give raises or bonuses or signing bonuses. Something to break the norm because we're, we're cruising for a bruiser at some point. Uh, one final question. Really? Yep, really. This is just I'm trying to go big picture here. Everybody talks about criminal justice reform, mm -hmm. and I'm watching some of the discussions already about there, there are some groups that are justice reform groups and there are different groups that represent different victims out there. Um, they can't even agree on what on how to do failure to protect, for example. <clears throat> how do you, or how much does the public, and I'll even include the press, how much do they really know about this issue? Because it's going to be debated. Very little. Sorry. It's just very little, unless you are a stakeholder or with a particular stakeholder group, you may know a lot about what they want. That's why it was so important to get everybody in the room to hear, essentially, here's the state of the system, and it's the state of our system, and we're only one small piece at the tail end of the criminal justice spectrum. It's important to educate people all the time. And uh, I know folks are tired of seeing me on TV. And here, I'm, are you tired of that? Here, I'm, kinda, yeah, yeah. Kinda, you two should be tired. But kinda. Tired of me, that is. But but it, I, I worry often that it's 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 not the message, but folks get tired of the messenger. So um, we're looking at other ways to get this message out. We've expanded our our social media platform. Um, I, I'm I'm proud of what our staff does on a daily basis, it's difficult. It is really difficult and I'm, I'm shocked our turnover isn't more, isn't higher than what it is. I mean, we're, we're turning over our correctional officers at about, I don't know, 27% a year. Most businesses fail doing that. We're not a business, we're not a for-profit entity. We have been around since Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, remember that. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. So let's fix it. We've got a new governor, new group of legislators. Let's educate everybody and fix it. It's not that tough. Well, I kind of like that. Sounds like a good tag, don't you think? I show? like it. I like it. It's Mr. not Albon, that tough. Thanks very much. For what? For hanging in there with us. Next time we're going to talk about something. That maybe we'll talk about barbecue next time. Good luck to you in this session. Thank you. I'll take all the luck, blessings, prayers we can get for DOC. All right, that's what we got this week. Thanks for watching. See you next week.